this is an introductory talk on the NPTEL web course on topology here and on topology under this topic we have included five chapters we aim to give that is plan to give two or three lectures for each chapter let us see the motivation to start with what we mean by the topology then we will give basic concept in topology and then we will introduce other notions we are all familiar with what we mean by real line and the Euclidean plane and also we know if we take a subset say capital A, a non empty subset of R. Then we know that what do we mean by the set A is an open set. Let us recall A is said to be A is said to be on open set open set in R open set if for each x in A if for each element x here it is each x in A. So, there exist there exist a positive real number. So, we say there exists R greater than 0 such that the open interval x minus r x plus r is completely contained in A that is this open interval is a subset of A. So, we have x is in the set A then we we should be able to find at least one r here that r is the radius this is the open interval we say that the center is x and radius r and this open interval is contained in a and if this happens for each x though we did not write r depends on x. So, for each x the r may vary then such a case we say that a is an open subset of r. For example, if we take the open interval any open interval say a comma b a comma b they are real numbers a is strictly less than b now take any x in this is our set a here we take a is 
the open interval open interval a comma b and we have taken take x in x belongs to the set a then from x see the length length of the interval open a to x and open x to b then find the minimum suppose this length is that is x minus a say r 1 and b minus x say r 2 both are greater than 0 because x is not equal to a x not equal to b. So, this is greater than 0. Now, take take now take or half of minimum of r 1 comma r 2. So, if you take the half of this center is x radius is anything less than r. So, then the, the open interval center at x radius r x minus r this is x plus r this open interval is completely contained in the set A. Then open interval x minus r x plus r is completely contained in A. This is true for every x in the set A. In our case, our set A is open interval a comma b. Suppose, if x is even closer to b, still we have this is our x, still x b minus x is positive. Then half of the distance, if this is our radius, then this open interval will be sub contained in open a b. So, I mean what we want is this r depends upon x. So, hence by our definitions the open interval a comma b is an open set. So, then it is easy to see that see for example, one open open interval 1 comma say 2 then say open interval 3 comma 4 then you take any x in either now take a equal to open interval 1 comma 2 union open interval 3 comma 4 if you take an x in a either x is in the in x is in open interval 1 comma 2 in this case they are disjoint. So, or x is in open interval 3 comma 4. So, in any case we can find an or say that this is our distance between x and this point is our r. Then uh, the open interval x minus r this is x plus r is contained in open interval 1 comma 2 which is subset of A. Similarly, if we take any x here we can find a suitable r center at x 
and this interval will be completely contained in open interval 3 comma 4 which in turn subset of A. So, this in set A is an open set. So, it is easy to see we will just give the statement. So, if we have a collection will let us say capital A suffix alpha j is we say it is an index set meaning is alpha belongs to j, j is just any set. So, to start with we will assume that j is a non empty set that means what for each alpha belongs to j we associate a set we have for each alpha we have a subset a suffix alpha of capital R. Further suppose each such A alpha is an open set. Further suppose, suppose each A alpha is open in R, then the union, then union of this set that is then union A suffix alpha alpha belongs to j is also an open set in R. Just write the open in R. Again take x belongs to union A alpha, alpha belongs to j. Then x will be in at least one A alpha that A alpha is open. Hence, there exists an R greater than 0 such that the open interval x minus R, x minus R, x plus R will be a subset of that particular A alpha say that particular alpha say alpha naught. Then, because A alpha naught is open, then this is a subset of the union A alpha, alpha belongs to J. So, hence for each x in union, that means x will be in at least one A alpha naught, that A alpha naught is an open set, that implies there exist on R greater than 0 such that open interval x minus R, x plus R is contained in the union A alpha, alpha belongs to J. Hence, this union is an open set. So, we say that in such case A alpha is a collection of open sets then the arbitrary union because why we say arbitrary union mean A alpha is any arbitrary collection of open sets then the union is also open set. This is true even when J is empty set when J is empty the union a alpha alpha belongs to empty is the empty set and, and 
will see that empty set is also a open set. Under our definition what we mean by a set is open mean in R if it is a conditional st statement A is open mean that is what if you assume that A non empty then X belongs to A implies there exist R such that open interval X minus R comma X plus R is contained in A. So, this statement is conditional. So, this when there is X the first statement is not true X is here first statement is X is in A that implies there exists some R such that X minus R X plus R is contained in A. Here when this statement is not true that is what imply P implies Q when the first statement is false whatever may be this second statement whether it is true or false this implic I mean P implies Q is true. I mean later we will see how this empty set so or we some we say that empty set sometimes I say that take it as a we want that empty set should be open. So, that is same thing as telling that arbitrary union of open set is open including when the index set is empty. Similarly, we can see that the intersection A alpha alpha belongs to J when J is empty this will be the the whole space. So, the motivation is see for example, if you have A 1, A 2, A 3 yeah say in this case a countable collection countable means for each natural number we have a set A n. Then we take A 1 first case <coughs> union A 2 a 1 union A 2 union A 3 and so on here A 1 the index set here it is 1 singleton 1 here index set is 1 comma 2 here index set is 1 2 3 and so on. So, when the index set is smaller then the union here say call it J 1, J 2, J 3. Then J 1 subset of J 2 will imply A 1 here subset of A 1 union A 2. This what we write union of A alpha, alpha belongs to J 2. So, when the index set is smaller that is what empty set is subset of every index set. So, I mean that is the motivation to have the union is union A alpha, alpha belongs to empty set is empty and when the intersection is the reverse. See A 1 if we take the intersection A 1, A 1 intersection A 2, A 1 intersection A 2 intersection A 3. Now, the index set smaller here J 1 then this is larger. So, similarly this when the hence when the index set is empty. So, it is like we have a collection of sets if you bring all together you will get a larger set. If you do not bring together you will not get anything empty or we have a 
the whole thing if we do not make it into pieces the whole space will remain you are not cutting into pieces. So, that is the motivation to have this arbitrary union is empty when the index set is empty and the intersection a alpha alpha is empty equal to the whole space. This idea is very important when we now define the topology. So, in R we have seen that including empty set it is easy to see that the whole R is open trivial arbitrary union of open set is open also it is easy to see that a 1 a 2 open in R implies a 1 intersection a 2 is also open in R. So, what we have is empty set is open in R, the whole R is open in R, arbitrary arbitrary union of open sets in R is also open in R and the third is see here when we say arbitrary including the I mean index set empty, but that we do not bother because of empty set and R we are already included and second is intersection finite intersection of open set is open for that enough to include a 1 a 2 or open sets in R implies a 1 intersection a 2 is also open in R. This gives that J finite A alpha open for each alpha belongs to J that will imply intersection A alpha alpha belongs to J is also open. <coughs> when alpha is empty this sorry alpha belongs to J, J the index set is empty then the intersection will be the whole R which is already open. So, only we have to see when j is finite and non empty. So, then use indexion. So, if it is any finite set mean it is of the type a 1 a 2 a n. So, now a 1 open assume that the result is true for n minus 1. So, then we have a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a n minus 1 is open, a n is open, then we have proved that a 1 intersection a 2 is open. This is exercise. So, you can easily prove that a 1 a 2 are open in R implies a 1 intersection a 2 is open. Hence, using that we can prove the intersection in a 1 intersection a 2 up to intersection a n is open. That is <coughs> now we call that as a collection tau the collection the collection of all subsets of collection of all subsets of 
or collection of all open open subsets of R. If we call that tau the collection of all open subsets in R, then that collection is closed under arbitrary union and finite intersection. This is the basic <coughs> properties of R. This can be I mean it is well known that if we introduce a notion called metric then the same concept we can extend to a metric space that we will discuss when we introduce the other concept namely what is a basis. So, now let, let us introduce what is known as a topology. So, what is the idea in introducing the topology is first to start with R is study the concept of say open set then using open set we have the convergence what we call compact <coughs> every if you can cover a set by a collection of open set from that we can extract finitely many members that will be sufficient. The smaller collection will also cover that set A then that is called compact. Compact similarly we introduce what is called not connected mean there is a subset A such so that A is non empty not equal to the whole space such so that A and A complement both are open such concept in a general metric space we call it connected. All these notions depends only on open sets. So, instead of having a particular type of space like r power n later we will see even function spaces like c of 0 1 here we have a distance function notion. See all this thing will come as a particular case of the space which we are going to define known as topology. So, what we mean by a topology is we will have this open set if A is a non empty open set if we take a x in A then we say that this A is a neighborhood of the point x. So, essentially what we have is we have a collection of neighborhoods that neighborhood has some these properties namely closed under arbitrary union and finite intersection. <coughs> See there are excellent books are available for this co for topology. So, that is why this course is not a replacement of that available textbook that is not our aim under this NPTEL web course we have included notes meant for a one semester course say either for 40 hours or maximum 50 hours. So, this notes will be sufficient for one semester course then once you understand the basic concept that is why for each chapter first if a student wants to learn the subject with understanding the basic concept first listen for to before reading each chapter just listen this one this whatever lectures given for that particular chapter then if you start if that student starts reading then you will have a 
maturity to understand the concept that is the aim of giving these lectures two three lectures for each chapter. So, the reference books are Tobology by Mungers, General Tobology by Kelly. This is an excellent Mungers, is a students friendly. I mean, it is concepts are so explained for in a students friendly way, <coughs> easy to understand. Whereas, general topology by Kelly is a classical book, it require maturity to understand. Other book are all equally, they are all very good. Introduction to topology by K. D. Josie, general topology by Willard, topology by Duhunji. So, there are many other excellent books are available. At least we have mentioned here some of the books. Now, we will see what is the concept called topology. See, we are going to replace the set R by an arbitrary set. In fact, x is any set. In fact, we do not even assume that it is non empty. So, x is any set any set. So, here then we know what is called power set of x, the collection, the collection of the collection of all subsets, subsets of capital X, all subset mean including empty set. So, now then from this collection, we will have a sub collection, that sub collection will have the properties namely that sub collection is closed under arbitrary union and finite intersection. Then that sub collection is called a topology on x. So, we have the power set P of x, a sub collection tau. So, that notation is we read as tau <coughs> take tau a sub collection. I mean it is just a set, it tau a subset of power set of x, because here each element in tau mean it belongs to power set of x, which is a subset of x. Hence, we call tau a collection of subsets of x. Then this collection, this collection tau this collection tau is said to be a topology on capital X if it satisfies if this collection satisfies if it satisfies the following, we will just write it, if it satisfies the following properties namely first that collection should contain the null set or we say empty set and the whole set x that means, this should belongs to tau, this is the minimum requirement. Any <coughs> tau empty set and the whole space x belongs to tau. Second, it is closed under arbitrary union, meaning is you take, take j non empty index set 
I mean meaning is j is just any set which is non empty for each for each alpha belongs to j a alpha belongs to tau. It is given that for each alpha belongs to j a alpha is a subset of x and that subset belongs to tau. If it is so, then this should imply closed under union, union a alpha should also again this will be a subset, this again belongs to tau and third if a 1 this is symbol, third a 1 a 2 belongs to tau implies a 1 intersection a 2 also belongs to tau. If our tau a subset of power set of x has these three properties namely empty set x belongs to tau, a alpha belongs to tau for each alpha implies union is in tau and a 1 a 2 is in tau implies a 1 intersection a 2 is in tau then this collection tau is called a topology on x. So, on why we call it a topology mean on the same x we can define more than one topology. So, now we will see some simple example unlike in other metric spaces or other vector space and other notions here it is just we are starting with any set. So, it is easy to give construct example. See to start with x is take on any set we can always construct x is any set ok just for we will to avoid trivial tau contain only empty set. So, we avoid that we will assume that x is non empty. See now examples first call it say tau 1. So, <coughs> we call it tau 1 or say tau suffix t for trivial ok just we will write it here tau 1. What is our minimum condition is empty set and x should be there. So, we cannot avoid that. So, empty set and x can we stop only this a smaller collection. Now, whether yes first condition is satisfied. Second says if a alpha belongs to tau where alpha is some a collection otherwise what this says that we have a sub collection of tau. So, but sub collection of here the tau is tau 1 this has only two sets. Then sub collection will contain either empty set or singleton x or empty set and x whatever may be the union will be either empty or x it is to be it is close under arbitrary union again intersection same see what are the possible sets that is what empty set and x. Sing one set otherwise empty set and x. So, whatever may be the this only one set intersection this here intersection x with x empty set and empty set intersection x. So, this is trivial this is a topology this I will write in short topology on x. The other extreme collect take 
this tau, so either we call it tau suffix d for discrete or we say in this case just here tau suffix to the whole the other extreme which we call that is power set of x. It contains the collection of all subsets. Then every empty set see what is empty set is also a subset empty set belongs to a subset it is in power set of x that is our tau 2 and x is in subset of x it is in tau 2 and if we take the union a alpha where each a alpha belongs to tau 2 mean it is a subset then union is also a subset. So, that will also belongs to tau 2 similarly a 1 is in tau 2 a 2 is in tau 2 implied a 1 intersection a 2 is in tau 2. So, hence this is also a topology this is called known as discrete topology discrete topology we will call each a if it is belongs to tau tau is our topology then that a is called every member of tau is called open set that is our definition definition of open set. So, here every subset is an open set whereas, here the only even x may be the set of real numbers, but that case here empty set and x are the only open set here r is every set is a open set. Now, we will see this is trivial example again take see if you want you can give any symbol example you can start with any set x say some finite set 1 2 3 take say call it tau 3 we need empty set we need capital X say singleton 1 see that itself we see so this set tau 3 contain empty set x and singleton 1. So, it is closed under arbitrary union if you take any union either capital X or singleton 1. So, both k and intersection <coughs> either it is empty or x or this this is also a mean topology on x. So, you take we can give any number of example. So, if you suppose empty set and x 1 say 1 comma 2. Now, suppose we stop this whether whether is tau 4 a topology on x. So, the obviously it is not closed under arbitrary union because if we take a 1 singleton 1 belongs to our collection tau 4 a 2 singleton 2 belongs to tau 4, but the union is not in tau 4. So, that means it is not closed under arbitrary union for here what is our index set is j equal to 1 comma 2 then that is not closed mean it is not a not a topology topology on x. So, now again we will go back to any arbitrary x in this case we will assume that our x is a infinite set we will see why x any infinite set infinite that means not a finite set infinite set and here we call it tau f f for I mean finite this we say that this is called known as co 
finite topology go mean complement should be finite a when you say that a subset a subset of x that mean a is in tau when we say is if and only if the this I am writing for complement of a is x difference a this is finite. So, note that already x is an infinite set. So, we want that first empty set should belongs to here. So, when empty set suppose empty set if we take a equal to m t, when suppose if we stop only here, then complement of empty set is the whole space which is infinite, then empty set will not be here. So, it will not be a topology. So, so the so, but we need so to take care of that if a complement is finite or the complement is the whole space not finite mean a complement should be the whole space then empty set now will come inside. Now, we can see that this is a then this tau suffix f is a topology on capital X known as cofinite known as cofinite or finite complement or finite complement topology on capital X. This will be come we will come across many time for giving nice examples. So, now we will not see all the things see suppose I will give the quickly the how to prove that empty set x s yes, empty set x belongs to tau f. Second suppose suppose a alpha alpha belongs to some index set j we can assume that non empty <coughs> is a collection of a collection of members of tau f. Then what we have to prove is to prove or claim union a alpha alpha belongs to j should belongs to tau f, but what is when some a will be here mean take the complement two cases complement either enough to prove it is finite if not finite it should be the whole space. So, take the our a here is take a equal to union of a alpha alpha belongs to j. Then use the de Morgan law a complement equal to complement of this then by de Morgan law it is intersection a alpha complement alpha belongs to j. So, now what is the if what can happen is we know already each a alpha complement is either finite or the whole space. Suppose the worst thing can happen is a alpha complement the whole space x for each alpha belongs to j then trivial each a alpha complement is x then what will happen to a complement the whole space. So, we are through otherwise a complement 
for at least otherwise for at least one alpha naught belongs to j, a alpha naught complement is not equal to x. That means, it should be a finite set, this is finite. Then in this case, then intersection will be a subset of that particular a alpha naught complement, this is finite subset of a finite set is finite, hence A alpha complement is finite. That implies our union is also in tau f and intersection is almost trivial A 1 complement finite, A 2 complement finite or the whole space. Then intersection of finite set is finite, both are the whole space means the uh, intersection is finite. So, similarly a 1 a 2 belongs to tau f imply a 1 intersection a 2 belongs to tau f. Hence, tau f is a topology on x. This topology is called cofinite topology. In the next class, we will see how to from a smaller collection which we call it basis from that how to construct a topology and other related concepts. Thank you.